This red angular tram, officially named the KTM-5, is an icon of the fallen Soviet Empire. As simple and reliable as a battle tank, it's as if it was destined to fight the infamous Russian off-road, and more than 50 years later, continue to serve in the almost post-apocalyptic streets of what was once a great civilization. This glorious soldier has been everywhere, from the shores of the Baltic Sea, through the valley of the Caucasus Mountains, to the harsh Siberian taiga. He has watched America closely from the other side of the Pacific Ocean, and it won't be long before some eccentric billionaire watches this video and brings him to the San Francisco Streetcar Museum. You can make this happen by sharing this video and helping this channel grow. Just don't forget to click the like button and subscribe. Now let's trace this tram's valiant combat history together and see what fortitude this simply built vehicle has shown us. The sun rises early here in the East Siberian town of Ustilimsk. Olga, a tram driver at the local depot, is among the very few people out on the foggy morning streets on her way to work. She will be preparing to run the first trip of the route that connects the town with the wood processing plant. Locals call Ust-Ilimsk a dead-end city. The highway and railroad terminate here, and to the north, there's nothing but thousands of kilometers of wild taiga forest, with a few native settlements of Avinki people. Two unit KTM-5 trains run at 60 kilometers per hour on the tracks of the northernmost high-speed tram system, and down these hills, it is possible to reach 90. The beautiful railway is frequented by squirrels, hares, and sometimes even bears. There are no strangers among the tram passengers. In this small town, everybody knows each other and treats common property with respect. And although the system has seen better days, the six remaining tram trains have been preserved in almost original condition, including the interior wall cladding and leather seats. Olga says she's happy with her job, cruising around in this legendary machine in beautiful northern nature. The tram runs smoothly even when winter temperatures fall to minus 30 to 40 degrees Celsius, providing a good alternative to cars, which in such a cold climate have to be either stored in a warm garage or left with the engine running 24 seven. Meanwhile, in the city of Zhezhinsk, only a few hours drive from Moscow, Valentina is performing routine checks before departing on her last trip. The tram system here, which is as old as the city, is being shut down completely. Valentina has worked as a tram driver for 44 years. In the Soviet Union, the city was a major chemical industry center and had many long routes connecting residential districts with numerous factories. After all of these factories became obsolete, the vast majority of the tram lines turned out to be of no use too. The ones serving the city center were forced to engage in unfair competition with minibuses, also known as marshrutkas. And after two decades of poor transport policy and sometimes even outright sabotage from the corrupt city government, the margin of safety of the system was exhausted and the decision was made to shut it down completely. We already have a trolley bus system. It's too much for us to support two types of electric public transit, the city government claimed. The townspeople are saying goodbye to the trams with a heavy heart. The KTM-5's angular and awkward design, which was developed by the All-Union Scientific Research Institute of Technical Aesthetics, didn't seem particularly aesthetically pleasing to the public either then or now. 
The KTM 5 has no chance of becoming a cute retro tram and will probably forever remain a toothy monster that scares children. The state to which these cars were brought due to poor maintenance also does not arouse sympathy among the passengers, complaining about the noise and swaying. However, the tram also has positive features. Its sliding doors are wider and much more convenient than the swinging doors of other trams of that time. The interior of the tram is very spacious and bright. Each seat has a heater underneath it, and they are incredibly cozy and warm in winter. This tram is often used as a training car, and many drivers who now work on modern machines have pleasant nostalgic memories of the KTM 5. They also note that the small cockpit of this tram is very ergonomic, since all controls can be reached without getting up from the seat. The margin of safety is something that distinguishes this tram from the others. Its estimated service lifetime is only 16 years, as the tram was designed to save massively on materials in an effort to reduce the cost of construction. The first units even had a completely plastic body in order to reduce the tram's weight. This was later replaced with steel after a series of fires. And guess what? The oldest KTM 5 that has survived to the present day was produced in 1971 under the serial number 665 and it's still serving the city streets of Pavlodar in Kazakhstan, preparing to celebrate its 50-year anniversary without having had a single overhaul. The secret to such a long life is the enthusiasm of the hard-working people from the tram depots all across the former USSR, who, given very little funding, were able to keep these cars running for two or even three times their expected lifespans. In the hardest times, some enterprises even had their handymen perform third-party orders in order to make extra money necessary to keep the unprofitable transportation service running. Of course, not every system was able to handle the crisis that hit all of the republics of the former Soviet Union after its collapse. Here is some archive footage of trams running in the town of Sungait, an industrial suburb of Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan. Note the windows covered with pieces of metal and cardboard, the missing parts on the body of the tram. This was not an uncommon state for these cars in the beginning of the 90s, even in richer cities. The tram's frame is especially weak and the rear part of the car was often held together only by casing, swinging and squeaking as the tram moved over the crooked rails. So, as they say, these trams are still alive not thanks to, but in spite of. In the Latvian city of Daugavpils, however, they're working as good as new. And while the city is now obviously searching for something more up-to-date to send out to its streets, we can congratulate our Soviet soldier on reaching as far as the European Union and stepping foot on the soil of this NATO country. But at home, in Mother Russia, he is irreplaceable. No other machine is able to cope with the twisted and worn-out rails that haven't been changed for decades. No other machine can be so easily adapted to work with antique but simple and reliable bow current collectors that are much more resilient to battered and sagging overhead wires. No other machine is capable of fording the streams that appear when the first rays of the sun in spring start to melt the giant snowdrifts of Siberia. No other machine can be kept in working order using just a hammer and a few swear words, and in dying systems that also had the Tatra T3 or other cars among their rolling stock, it was the KTM 5 that lived to see the closing of the very last lines. The cities that survived the crisis successfully and could even scrape together some money to buy one new car all ended up the same. After a day or two, the new car broke down, the pantograph fractured, and the novelty was sent off to the depot to stay and be covered with the snow. Yeah.
out of almost 15,000 units manufactured, which makes the KTM5 the most produced tram in the world. 1,600 are still operating in passenger service today. Some of them work in relatively prosperous cities that have hundreds of trams. Others are the only remaining running tram car in town. Some of them have not changed much, while others were restyled beyond recognition during the overhaul. Those whose condition did not allow them to continue working with passengers were given a second life as numerous types of service cars, handcrafted right in the depots. Some of these trams are green, some are blue, and of course, there's an infinite amount of shades of red. If this video gets interest and gains 500 views, I'll make a second part telling more stories about the KTM5 and showing more restored historic footage of these remarkable streetcars, imperturbably making their way through the beautiful desolation. Please help spread the word by sharing this video with other tram lovers and let this red Russian box and the people working on it be an example of vitality to us all.